New Zealand, a country lauded for its coronavirus strategy. 100 days is a, a milestone to mark, but again, we still need to be vigilant regardless. But Jacinda Ardern, the country's PM, was right to be cautious. After over 100 days clear, four new cases of the virus were recorded in Auckland today. We have four cases all in one household. More than one workplace, however, is involved. When the pandemic broke out, New Zealand implemented a raft of measures. They locked down and tightly controlled the borders. In March, contact tracing and quarantine of visitors were put in place. Public events were cancelled. By May, community transmission was stopped. And in early June, the pandemic was declared over in New Zealand. But now new cases have emerged, people are asking if COVID can be eliminated, and that's no infections in a particular area or country. Some people say that this may be particularly challenging if, as world leaders suggest, eradication, that global extinction of infection, is near enough impossible. Does the recent cluster in New Zealand undermine the zero COVID approach? And just how applicable is New Zealand's experience to the UK? I think every place is distinctive. Um, you can also look at South Korea and see what they've done is remarkable. I mean, they have Seoul, a city of over 10 million people, and have managed to keep their numbers incredibly low. I think we shouldn't lose perspective over a few cases about the achievements that New Zealand has had, as well as Taiwan, Hong Kong, Vietnam, um, you know, the countries that have really controlled community transmission. Um, I think with zero COVID, you never expect not to see cases for weeks. The idea is you get out of community transmission so you can reopen a lot of your economy and schools and society in a safer way. I don't think global er eradication is feasible, but I don't think we should give up on eliminating community transmission. Others, however, take a different view. It may well behave like other endemic human coronaviruses that circulate year on year. If we wanted to have COVID um, zero, and I mean literally zero or very close to zero in the UK, we could possibly do it by closing all our borders, perhaps for a few years. Um, I think the damage done to the country would far exceed the potential damage of, from the virus itself. The consequences of going to this co zero COVID approach is isolation as a country the people being locked up for very long periods of time, perhaps years, uh, in lockdowns, intermittent or permanent, and children's education and young people's education and careers being severely damaged, possibly uh, destroyed for life. It's largely a rural country. It's got one big city, Auckland, which is comparable to the kind of cities we have in the UK. It is a unique situation and it's not replicable anywhere else, virtually anywhere else in the world. Until we have a safe and effective vaccine, New Zealand is only deferring its problems. As New Zealand enters its winter period and finds new cases, we'll all be watching to see if it can maintain its zero COVID approach and what impact that will have. Deborah Cohen joining us from Wellington is Professor Michael Baker, who devised New Zealand's COVID strategy and is the architect of the elimination strategy. Welcome to you, Professor. Uh, I don't know if you could hear the report there, but I'm sure you know what people say. New Zealand is geographically remote, has low population density, so it's not applicable to us. What do you think are the transferable lessons from New Zealand? Well, greetings. And uh, yes, of course, we have had a shock just in the last 24 hours with a small outbreak in Auckland and the government's taking very decisive measures to investigate and contain an outbreak. But you have to remember the countries pursuing elimination, and that is now a growing list, are uh, doing generally very well. And uh, one thing you have to plan for is setbacks. But at this point in time, New Zealand has the lowest COVID mortality in the OECD. Um, so it's actually, um, our population has been very well served by this strategy. We don't feel at all isolated. Uh, life has returned to virtually normal in New Zealand until yesterday, and hopefully it will, will again. But actually, if you look across the globe, you've got countries like Taiwan that I think have succeeded extremely well. They're protecting 24 million people from infection. 
Most of mainland China has been uh, free of infection, uh, 1.4 billion people. Vietnam has had an outbreak but has been largely free of this infection. Fiji and Pacific Islands have eliminated this virus. So it's really a very good strategy, and we think um, it's useful for far more countries but, than are using it at the moment. But, Professor, just to be clear, and, and you did uh, lead off on the point about these new cases, you had said that COVID had been eliminated in New Zealand. I just wonder whether this uh, causes you to think again about the viability of elimination as a strategy. Well, the idea of elimination applies to many infectious diseases, like uh, measles and rubella, for example, you can achieve elimination, you may lose it again. But the, the, the central idea is that this is what you're aiming to, to do. And we found this as a goal has been very helpful for organizing our response. Just like most of Australia has eliminated the virus and is doing extremely well, but they have had a resurgence in Victoria and New South Wales, but they are also like New Zealand, determined to stamp the virus out again. I think New but Zealand will succeed and get rid of it again from this country. As you've said, life has returned to, to normal in much of New Zealand, but obviously now in Auckland, a lockdown, which is pretty strict, I think, uh, quite similar in terms uh, to ours that we went through in, in late March and April. I mean, do, do you see this just happening now uh, intermittently for as long as it takes, a so-called hammer and dance, that you will have to close down even major New Zealand cities to keep ahead of this? Well not for a prolonged period because last time we had a lockdown at quite an intense level for five weeks and then two more weeks we emerged into a virus-free country we were then free of a virus for over three months and life returned to normal i think um, we're hoping that with our expanded contact tracing and testing this lockdown will be much shorter um, and hopefully confined to just the auckland region i'm sure everyone in new zealand uh, hopes you succeed in that prediction. Thank you very much indeed, Professor.